If you are thinking of getting yourself a citizenship and you want to and you can, definitely you have to watch this video till the end because the best citizenship you can get to yourself through investment is Malta. There is nothing better in this world that is better than the Maltese citizenship and the Maltese opportunity and the life in Malta, to be honest, but that's my humble opinion. The Malta citizenship by naturalization for exceptional services by direct investment. It is that hard to pronounce or short for the citizenship of Malta to investment. I just mentioned to you the official name. This is what we're going to be talking with you about today. And it's a very interesting thing to discuss because it is the only program in the European Union that might lead you to the citizenship in the end after you invest. Welcome to this video. My name is Dennis. I represent Astens, uh, a UK firm, and we're going to be discussing with you today the only and probably the most unique citizenship through investment that you can get in the world, and that is Malta, a very small yet very ambitious Mediterranean European Union nation. It's a bit of an important thing to mention that I spent there 16 years of my life, more than half of my life, in Malta, and I'm in love with this place. I'm in life of this country and for sure I'm in love with their citizenship program. What is the Maltese citizenship? What does it, what, what is it going to give you? Like, why would you get it? I mean, well, first of all, it's the only country in the European Union that provides citizenship that fast. It's naturalization. You have to be a resident for a year or three and you will become a citizen. What can you do with it? First of all, obviously, leave anywhere in the EU because you are going to be a European, a European citizen. Secondly, you have visa-free travel with almost more than 180 countries. EU, of course, UK, because you have a visa-free access with the UK. Asia, China, Singapore, you have visa-free travel with the United States as well. That's a rare thing to have. Well, it's not a visa-free travel per se, it's, it's a visa on arrival, but still, you know, other citizenship options do not have that opportunity. So it's an interesting thing to have. You have the access to the, you know, financial system of European Union and you, you, you just name it kind of, you know, what can be better than being a citizen of European Union from all the angles. So yeah, for sure, that's a very good passport to have. Before we dive in as to what the multi citizenship program is all about, again, the naturalization by exceptional investment is all about and direct investment, we have to touch upon of what Malta is. So that's a, a country, obviously, that is next to Italy. It's, it's a small island, 28 by 15 kilometers. It's not big, but it has a very big heart for, for everything in this world. Maltese nation is not big. There are less than half a million people. In fact, according to the most recent numbers, it's actually half a million. Yet, you can become a Maltese citizen if you do things right. So, you might notice that compared to other videos, compared to our website, I'm not mentioning the amounts, even though they're not small, it's more than a million uh, for a family, actually more than one and a half million euros uh, for a family, but it's not about the money. Malta has the toughest requirements for citizenship that you can find in the entire world, because it's not about the money. I mean, if you compare like for like, the quality of multi citizenship is actually worth much more in money. It's not about that. It's about, first of all, the talent and the quality of a human being. So if you are considering the multi citizenship, the first thing you need to look into is your background. If you have criminal record, if you have problems with the, with the media, if you have anything bad written about you, or if you're a bad human being in general, don't even think of considering Malta. They will not let you in. The, as far as the official statistics is concerned, you have one on every three applications rejected. So you can't just go in, apply, and uh, waste your time. Obviously, it doesn't make sense. Those people who qualify, those people who want to have the multi citizenship, those people who are ready to live there, because that's an important thing. Tune in and listen to what we're going to say next. If you want to have the best citizenship in this world, I'd probably suggest to put up the like because we all want that. But for sure, if you can agree with me that the multi citizenship is the best one, please hit the like button. Just adding up a little bit to the multi citizenship before I dive in into what is the multi citizenship program or naturalization by uh, direct, uh, by exception services by direct investment. I have to say that Maltese history is stunning. That's just another thing to add because I was living there. If you are obsessed with history, if you are obsessed with, you know, knights, because Maltese have 
knights, you have the, uh, the Maltese order of knights. This is something you need to even look further before you go for citizenship because you can become a citizen of an amazing country with an amazing history. That's something you should definitely consider. So, but let's talk about what is this citizenship opportunity and what you have to do before you can even consider. Let's talk about the financials first, of course. You have uh, either 650 or more donation that you have to do to the government along with the fees. Altogether, it will come to 1.2, 1.3, 1.5, 2 million, depending on the property side. It might sound weird that why am I not giving you the exact prices? Because for every family, the price will be different. For someone, it will be 1 million, for someone, it will be 2 million, and so on and so forth. So if you do want an exact breakdown, get in touch with us, Astons or get in touch with someone else who is a licensed agent and so on and so forth because the breakdown is not an easy thing to give just to give you an indication it's 1 million and above but it's so the, it, there is a donation in it there are government fees there are due diligence fees there is a property element and so on and it's you know what it's a bit funny because you can't call that a donation really and truly because that's an investment into yourself yes okay you do not get any return yes okay you lose that money but Come on, I mean, you're investing into your future, into in the future of your family, into the future of your kids. Is that a donation? No. To me, that's an investment. And actually, as Warren, Buff as Warren Buffett once said, what can be a better investment than an investment into yourself? So yeah, to me, that's an investment. That's not a donation. But you might think differently. If you do, put up your thoughts in the comment section and we're going to debate on that. What is the Maltese citizenship at all? Before we go into requirements, documents, timelines, and so on, what can Maltese citizenship provide you with? Well, first of all, it's the only, the last, for sure, the last program, uh, or, well, I wouldn't say even a program, a pathway that will lead you to the citizenship of the European Union. That's the only and the last pathway there is left and you never know if it will stay there or not because as you might know if you were googling about Malta about the citizenship of Malta about the naturalization process and everything you would probably come across the fact that European Union European Commission is taking Malta to the court of justice for that citizenship program now there is a whole story behind it and uh, in simple terms there is no way European Union can win that I mean they're just suing Malta on weird grounds and uh, the multiple citizenship, there is no way that court can be won because there are no legal basis for that court case. I can assure you that the multi citizenship is there to stay. However, the question is for how long and what will be the next change because they've changed the program recently. It was opened in 2014. If I'm not mistaken, in 2019, it, will, it got changed or 2020. And now it's what, what it is so with the requirements and, and uh, for the residency and for the price and for, for everything else. So let's talk about speaking of those requirements, because obviously the first question, second question, the first one is how much. The second question which we get from our clients is how long, how much, how long? Makes sense. It takes 16, 18, sometimes 20 months for the whole process to be done. You start off with the residency, either one year residency or three year residency, depending on the which donation pathway you go for. And once that residency period is lapsed and you have obviously spent a certain amount of time within that residency period, you go to citizenship application, which is called eligibility submission. I mean, in professional terms, it's called eligibility pack submission, which is basically application for the citizenship. But obviously there is, as I said, there, there are some requirements that you have to meet before that can happen. So once the residency period is lapsed, one year, three years, then you are applying for the citizenship itself, you're making the donation, and uh, you're doing the oath of allegiance, you're doing, you know, uh, you're coming over to Malta, and again, so from A to Z, the process takes more than a year for sure, it uh, takes at least 16 months, sometimes 18 months, sometimes more than that, if you go for the three-year residency period term. But not only the residency requirements are there, you have also the due diligence requirements. I mean, m I myself spent the last five years as the regulator of the citizenship by investment sector, which is called Investment Migration Council. We've dealt with banks, with private wealth management and so on. And I can assure you there is not a single entity in this world, maybe, you know, US Ministry of Defense, and that's it, that has that much level of compliance, that much level of due diligence. The way that the Maltese government will check you as the prospective applicant for the Maltese citizenship is insane. They will check your background for the last, you know, the decades. They will check your companies. They will check your business. They will check 
everything. Before they will even let you pay, they will check and make sure that you are a fit for all the Maltese citizenship. So as I said at the beginning of this video, it is not about the money. It's about who you are. Because come on, one million dollars, euros, whatever, for the best, one of the best passports in the world, one of the best countries and citizenship in the world, that's not enough. I'd charge more if I was there, but probably good for you. <laughs> that it's not me who, who sets the prices. The amount of checks that they conduct is enormous and you have to be prepared for that, that you have to show literally everything there is about you and especially about your businesses. So we once had, speaking of the requirements and due diligence, we once had a case for the multi citizenship and I mean, it went long, it's not, it's never easy. And uh, the client had, I think 25 or 27 companies, something like that, so a big amount of companies, you know? And uh, we ended up, the, I'm not kidding, we rented up a van, a minivan, and we had we lo that van was loaded up till the ceiling with the documents about the, uh, the client's companies. We actually had to roll in the you know the boxes of the documents. It's that much, you know. It's to that extent that they check, and they actually went down. They've checked every single company, every single bank account, and uh, they asked another million questions. What I want to emphasize on is the fact that you have to, if you want the citizenship of Malta, if you want the European Union citizenship, forget about, you know, thinking, because you have to make a decision today, or no, yesterday, because what's going on is that there is some level of political bully, I'd probably say, and that happens everywhere in the world, especially, you know, in, in entities like European Union, and uh, Malta is being bullied for the fact that they give freedom to the most talented people in the world because obviously that makes sense that whoever passes the Maltese due diligence, whoever has the amount of funds to afford himself or herself the citizenship of Malta, that means that they are, well, at least smart, at the very least. Actually, in real terms, they're good and talented people. So you see, the Malta is trying to get smart people to their country as citizens so they can only contribute, not just in money, but in their talent. That, that's point. But that might finish. That might stop because, as I said, there is bullying. So the, po the point I'm trying to make here is that if you are considering, if you want to have the best citizenship that money can buy, even though I'm not supposed to say that, you have to go ahead tomorrow, ideally today, because otherwise you'll just miss out.